If your house is lacking storage space and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a fancy new wardrobe, then I'll show you how to build one yourself. Easy as. To minimise waste, I've worked within the dimensions of four off-the-shelf 2.4 by 1.2 millimetre sheets. There's one 10mm thick sheet for the back and three 18mm sheets for the sides and shelves. I've built it as two units so it's easy to take apart and move through the house. It's two metres high with the larger side 800mm wide. The smaller side is 396mm wide and I've made it 585mm deep. The top, bottom and three shelves for the small unit will sit in between the sides which are each 18mm thick making the shelves 360mm wide and 585 deep. Similarly, the top, bottom and shelves in the larger unit will be 800mm minus 18mm times 2 which is 764mm. One of these shelves will be a half shelf and just 300mm deep. So, factoring in a few extra mils for the actual cuts, as I said, all these pieces come from four sheets of plywood. For a complete cutting list, grab yourself a copy of the guide in store or online and you'll be good to go. Cut all your pieces to size using a bench saw or circular saw with a straight edge. Then it's a good idea to label them so you know what's what as you piece your wardrobe together. So I'm going to start building my biggest side first. Now I've got my two sides laid out and the type of timber that I'm using is a non-structural plywood which means generally you've got one side that's better than the other. So I'm going to put all my better looking sides on the outside because on the inside is generally going to be covered with books and clothes etc stuff like that. I'm going to start marking out exactly where all my shelves go so I can pre-drill all my holes so it's going to be a lot easier doing that now than when the whole thing's built and then put my shelves in later. So my first shelf is going to be 250 millimetres off the bottom. I'm going to mark that to the bottom of my shelf. I'll put a line at 250 and an X indicates exactly where my shelf sits and I'm going to put another one at 500 millimetres. Now my bottom shelf, I'm going to rule that line all the way. I'm going to do two lines here. One indicating the bottom of the shelf, I'm still going to put an X there and then I'm going to do a line indicating the centre of our shelf, exactly where the screws go. So that's 9mm. So I'll do that down here as well. And I'll do that all the way across. And just to make it super clear, I'll put a C on there, that means centre. So on the top shelf here, I've decided just to make that a half width shelf, 300 millimetres wide. So I'm going to mark that, that indicates exactly the end of our shelf. Rule a line where the bottom of the sheet goes. Once again, we'll do a mark 9 millimetres over, indicating the centre of where our screw line is going to be. And now we'll do exactly the same, but on that side there, because that is the back of the wardrobe as well. So my shelf is 300 millimetres long. And the centre will be nine millimetres up. I'll rule that across and add a C. So obviously I've got a bottom and a top to my unit as well. So I'm going to mark nine millimetres now. That's half the thickness. And I'll just finger gauge a line all the way along. That's the centre of my screw line. Same again on this side. Right, just to be super clear here, this is a mirror image of each other. That's going to stand up like that, and our shelves are going to slot in. And I'll rule a line for the centre of our screws at the top as well. OK, so I'm just about ready to start pre-drilling the holes. I'm starting at the bottom here, and so what I'm going to do is just evenly mark out for our screw holes. Come in 40 millimetres from each edge of the sheet. And then I'm going to come in 170, that way that'll give me two screws in the middle, four screws in total. So what I've got here, it is a countersink and drilling piece all in one. And I can set the depth to how deep I want to go. That way I can pre-drill and countersink my holes at the same time. Then later on, I'll add little pine plugs to neatly cover over the screws. For our shorter shelf, I've just got three screws in there. I've just come in 40 millimetres again and one in the middle. I'll do the same at the top. 
and for the second side. So it's time to start assembling our two pieces. So to start off with, I've just got my bottom piece and one side piece. I'm just going to bring those two together, make sure it's nice and flush on the bottom, that's looking lovely. And I'm just going to take our countersink drill bit and I'm going to drill into our ply sheet. Sometimes plywood has a tendency to split, so that's going to eliminate that. So I'm just going to whack some PVA on where our boards join. Don't worry if you put too much PVA on there, we can always wipe it off. So make sure you do have a wet rag on hand. Then screw the side to the bottom and wipe off any excess glue before it dries. The main reason for this is, especially when you're going to be using a polyurethane or a stain on your timber, if you don't wipe your PVA off, it will show up as a white spot. Then attach the top to this side in the same way. Lovely, so all we've got to do is exactly the same for the other side. So it's time to put our shelves in. I've already marked where the bottom of our shelf goes on both of them. I could transfer that mark, square it all the way down, put our shelf in up to that mark. But what I have decided to do is cut myself a packet. It's going to make my job a whole lot easier. So I've just got an off cut of plywood. I've cut that to 232 millimetres. Because remember we were 250 from the bottom to the bottom of our shelf. So I've taken off the 18 mil thickness, which leaves me 232. Sit that in there. I'm going to put some PVA in. Cool, so we'll just take our shelf. Got the good side facing up. When you're pushing this in, we don't want to smear our PVA too much, so I'm just going to try and bellow this outside bit out so it goes onto the PVA as opposed to pushing it away. There we go. Okay, so we'll just pre-drill that hole into the ply shelf. Ply screw. So you don't want to over tighten your screw because what can happen is the screw can punch all the way through, which we don't want to do. Do the top and the bottom first. And just make sure that your shelf is hard up against our packer. Then screw the other side, remove the packers and do the same for the half shelf. Rightio, I've just flipped over my unit and I'm about to put my backboard on. So I put my PVA on. When you're dropping this down, try and line it up as perfectly as you can. Then starting on the long side once again, I'll draw a pencil line roughly nine millimetres in, giving me the centre of my screws. And I'll pre-drill the backboard about every 250 millimetres and screw it on. Right. I've screwed off one side. I can see that my ply is overhanging the bottom slightly here, which means my unit is a little bit out of square. So what I've got to do is push my ply that way, which is forcing the unit back down this way. So once that's sitting nice and flush, I know that we're perfectly square. And then I'll pre-drill and screw the bottom to the back. And then the second side and the top. Wipe away any excess PVA, and that's the back done. Finally, continue the centre line for the shelves from the sides to the back. Pre-drill and screw those in. Time to put the casters on. Pretty straightforward. It's got a 25mm square dry screw. Don't need a pre-drill. It's got to line that up so it's just on the inside so we don't see any of the caster from the outside. And on the inside, I'm just going to use these 16 mil screw. Now it's got a big fat head on them because there is quite a big hole I've got to cover. So say we put a, a washer on, these screws here will be great. I'll use two lockable casters and two regular ones. Time of the job that I like, putting the old plugger in, so a little bit of PVA into the countersunk hole. We don't need to worry about putting too much in because by the time the plug goes in there, it's going to take up a fair bit of that space. So we don't want a whole lot of PVA we have to clean up. Take our little tapered plug, put it in. Just let that glue dry and we'll come over and give it a sand down later. 
and that way we've hidden all our screws for a really slick finish. Okay, my big unit's done. Now it's time for me to start assembling my smaller unit. So effectively, the process is exactly the same as this. I'll mark and pre-drill all the pieces, then fix them together. Okay, so I've just fixed my shelves in permanently. Now, if you want to have movable shelves, pretty easy. You can buy a range of different type of shelf plugs. So basically all you're going to do is drill a five mil hole. You can put a series of holes in, that way you can have as many shelves as you like and wherever you want. With the smaller unit done, I'll line them up, clamp them in position and then screw them together with 30 mil screws, which means it'll be nice and easy to take them apart again to move them through the house as needed. So I'm going to put four sets of screws at the front and then another four at the back. Then I'll give the whole wardrobe a sand, getting rid of any pencil marks, stamps on the ply and sanding the countersunk plugs down. Then dust it off, whitewash, stain or paint to suit. When it's dry I'll fix the hanging rod in position and for extra safety I'll secure it to the wall using an angle bracket. And we're done. Now you can get your stuff off the floor drobe and into the wardrobe that you've built yourself. It's got loads of storage space and when you make yours you can adjust the design to suit. I've put a bike hook on the side and a strap for a surfboard on the other. But you can attach whatever accessories you want and because it's on casters it's easy as to move around. And if you like what you've seen subscribe to the Mighty 10 YouTube channel for more handy content or click here to watch some now.